Hey, welcome to this new video. Today we want to make an effect inside of Blender Geometry Nodes with the newest simulation nodes integration, still experimental, but we want to make an effect like this. How can we do this? We first of all need the newest simulation nodes branch, which is still in development, but you can download it via the blender.org website. If you click on the bottom on experimental and then you click on branch, then you can scroll a little bit because it's a bit old. And then you can download the simulation branch and then we can open it. Now inside of Blender, we can click Sprite Fright away, sorry, and we can delete everything and we can add back in our cube. No, this not this time. We want to add a monkey. And here we have now our monkey. And how can we do, do this effect? So we need a second object. It's unrelevant what object. So let's take an, for instance, a plane. And let's go on that plane. Let's go into geometry nodes and click on new to create a new node tree. You can close this window here on the right. And let's stretch our node tree a little bit. Now inside here, we want to add in our simulation nodes. You can, you have to add the output first because it's still an experimental. I'm sure this won't be when this implement implementation is final. And now in here, we can drag in our Susan hat. Because now we want to use our Susan hat on the simulation input. And a big part of this is that we join our Susan back in here in our simulation because what this does, we can draw a bunch of Susan heads. And that's, that is a really cool effect. So let me show you what I mean. So if we hit play, you can see there's nothing different. But if you, if you change the location of the Susan head, you can see we can paint a bunch of Susans like this. Isn't this cool? So now we can work off of that. So now we can say, so at first we say that in every iteration, you should add a new Susan hat on the new location. So at frame 185, we have 185 Susans with different locations. So the location we had on that frame. What can you do with this? We can, for instance, say that we want to scale. Every, on every iteration, we want to have, so with the scale elements node, we can say 0.9. So every on every frame, every Susan head gets scaled by 0.9. That means they are getting smaller and smaller like this. And this is already a really cool effect. <laughs> now, if your viewport is getting laggy, this is because they are a bunch of Susan hats, but you can't see them. So we can delete it after a certain iteration. And you can do this by using an if we create an attribute, so store named attribute, we call it H and we want to have it as an integer and we want to grab a named attribute. Of course, the same attribute it should be an integer 
and it should be h. And on every iteration, we want to use a math node and we want to add another h value on this. So now we have the value for every single Susan hat, how old it is. So on what iteration it is currently. And with this, we can delete Susan hats after a certain age. How can we do this? We can use a delete geometry node. And we can use a compare node set to integer and it's equal to. Now we can use our same age and we say after, for instance, three iterations, it should delete everything. So now it looks like this. So we only have three iterations, but of course we want to have a little bit more. So maybe 15 iterations. And now we have something like this. And of course you can have more if you want to. Now, the next effect is we want to have a little bit of distortion and we can do this with a set position node like this and we can use the original position in here. Now that doesn't change anything, but we can manipulate our position with a mix node set to color and we want to use it as linear light. And now we can control it with a noise texture, maybe set to two, and we want to have the detail down, the, the detail. Now we want to have it only affect 0.1. Now this should give us cool and cool effect like this. Maybe I want to have more iterations so you guys can see more like this. Yes. Maybe even more. 35. Yes, this should work. And also looks cool. So those are now like particles. And this is already an effect this is already nearly an effect you saw at the beginning. Now we want to convert them into curves. And we can do this outside of the simulation because then we, we don't want to convert them every single iteration. So let's use a curve to mesh node. Sorry, a mesh to curve because we have a mesh. So a mesh to curve node. By the way, you can add nodes with shift A. Sorry, I forgot to say that. I hope you came this far. So mesh to curves in here. And now we have a bunch of curves, but we want to have it back as a mesh. So we can have a curve to mesh node and we want to define a profile curve with a resolution of three, because then it isn't that laggy. Set the radius a bit down. Maybe something like this. Yes, should work. You can make it a little bit smaller, but because of compression of YouTube, I won't be having finer strokes. And now you can see we have already a pretty cool effect. But now we also want to have material and we can do this by creating first of all a new one. And now we want to set a new material, set material and the new one. And now we want to go into our shader editor and in here, so in Eevee, we want to make it a little bit emissive. But now we want to have the age of our particles also in our shader editor. 
because we want to have a nice fall off. How can we do this? So we can, of course, drag the H outside of our group output. And we can call it also H. And now in our shader editor, we can use the the attribute input node and we can grab our H attribute. Now, this is very bright and this is because those are all values over one. And so what we can do, we can use a map range node and we can bring this value down. So if we have used 35 iterations, we should also use a map range of from max of 35. And this should work. Now we can use this as an emission color. And we can color this in a specific color with this in here. And this is a pretty cool effect. Of course, you can also have more colors in here, for instance, purple as I did like this. So now you have three colors. And this is basically the whole effect. Um, you can of course, play around with more. So if you so if you also want to use like, of course, you can also skip these scale elements, then they are completely different. And you can also animate, of course, the geometry nodes object. So it's animates around our monkey. And yeah, then it expands. So you paint with your monkey like this. I guess this is the whole tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. I think this is a pretty great effect. And yes, thank you all for watching. If you want to have great materials, or you are searching for materials, I have a material pack on my Gumroad page, you can check that out if you want to. There are up to 300 great materials and there's also a free version of the material pack you can check that out you for free you can download it right now and yes thank you all for watching and hopefully see you again bye